of different things. So, Professor Rostov from uh, Alto University in Finland is going to talk to you, um, well, impact about retrofit. And he's going to talk about heating and, and, and other, other things. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Sapa. Thank you, for thank you Rista. Nice introduction. So, I will continue this previous presentation. This is the same thing. We have the same three buildings. And maybe one specification for previous that we have the five buildings, but in this conference and this seminar, we only focus on those three buildings here. Uh, because we have to <laughs> make some kind of a little bit more clear picture of that. And also the other, other thing why we focus on those, they are, they are using this intermittent heating. And like in the UK or in Nordic countries in Finland, we have continuous heating. And this intermittent heating gives some inter interesting futures, which I will show now and discuss a little bit my presentation here. So, we have the same group of the authors here, and uh, in this talk I will focusing about uh, this energy saving potential in the, these three buildings in the southern Europe. And we analyze with the simulation the impact of energy conservation potential for those technologies. And, uh, also, this case which uh, Safa and Youngmin talked about earlier, we make a simulation and in the later if we make a real measurement in the buildings and we monitor what actually happens, what level we reach before and after. And also part of this uh, project, there is also one work package where is analyzing the cost there as the base knowledge, how much our life cycle cost and what was the payback time and so on. So that's also part of the project. But like Youngmin say, some of the technologies are new and they are not implemented. So these three buildings, maybe I can jump over. So technologies are exactly the same situation what is before. And here I focus this intermittent heating because like in Greece, they use typically only a couple of, couple of hours to heating. So early morning, 7 to 9, and then the evening from... 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. In Portuguese, 7 to 8, 3 to 11. And in Spanish building, they have this set point setting there. And we want, we want to now compare in this simulation also what kind of savings we have it if there is a continuous heating, not this intermittent heating. And that's the focus of this, my, my presentation. So we're using this EDA modeling that they introduced for uh, Youngmin, and uh, this is the one of the how to say benchmark software in the globally. It's, a, it's quite, quite similar to Energy Plus. But this is the Swedish based software that we are commonly using in, in the Finland and uh, <coughs> also some other European countries like Switzerland is using this software. So, so here is the energy use before, before the renovation, and this is also what. Uh, Youngmin already presented, maybe I can move on this um, uh, conditions. I think this is the thing that um, when you have intermittent heating, your indoor climate conditions are not ideal, of course. And you have huge part of the time that your room temperature is below the set point. And set point mean here that is below that 18 or different countries like uh, 19 degrees here. And we can see here that in the Greece is uh, about 44% 40, is below the set point, Portugal's 49, Spanish building only, only 5, is a little bit more. But also other thing, proposal that time is higher than 25, is 20%, Portugal 7, Spanish space 12% around. Uh, they don't have cooling, only, only, only I think Portugal has a cooling. Greece has a cooling, sorry, Greece has a cooling. And uh, anyhow, they have handled this condition without the cooling reasonably well. One thing to note here in this simulation, I have to say that when we do in the simulation, we are using average year data. So we're using so-called test reference data that is average for several years. And of course, what happened now in the Europe when we have heat waves, the conditions are not average, they are extreme. So this calculation is not taken even to account for this kind of extreme conditions when we have much higher, maybe the heat cooling demand much higher there. Okay, then also the other thing that indoor quality wasn't so good because it's based on the natural ventilation and even this natural 
of ventilation is mainly based of the air leakage plus open up windows. So even they don't have natural stack ventilation there. And that's meaning that also only limited time CO2 level that is using here as a proxy is uh, 20%, 34%, or 41% is below 1,200 ppm. And we have very high CO, C, C, CO2 levels there. Okay, CO2 is only proxy that indicate pollutants, but coming from the persons. It's not the, nothing to do with the material emissions and so on, but this is just a good indicator to have some kind of view that how high the ventilation is there. Uh, if we have a continuous heating, of course, then we don't have this thermal comfort problem because we, have, we are able to keep the temperatures there, but indoor quality is, is the similar, that they are not exactly good. Okay, the same thing, we have these different technologies and we want to calculate different technologies individually and then make them as a package so we can see how they affect. And that base of that is part of the selection for the real buildings, what kind of technologies they are implemented there, or they should implement it there. Of course, what the young men say, there has also some other constraints that they may be protective building, you cannot do that, or you can do that, so that have to also take into account this analyze. But same technologies, I don't repeat it. Those here, I go for the, go for the results, and here we have two different bars here. Blue one is intermittent heating and then other ones continuous heating. Um, there is passive measures and we can see here, for example, this insulation has in the intermittent uh, heating only 16% reduction energy consumption, but continuous heating is a 44%. Uh, then we go for the generation package, is meaning that uh, in the continuous heating, this efficiency is lower, 14% or 22%, but in the actual cases, when they have intermittent heating, the effect is higher. So if we simplify the results here, we can see here that, that uh, in continuous heating, passive measures are relatively effective, more effective than energy generation thing. But if we have intermittent heating, it's vice versa. Energy generation have more, much higher potential to do that. And finally, because we are looking for the saving, uh, savings for energy consumption, saving for the CO2 emissions, target is a 60%. We try to look out how we can reach here. And it's, if we're looking for the final results here, it's interesting to see that it's based of this combination that is able to implement here the creek buildings. If we have intermittent heating, we are reach a level of 50% reduction there. But if the case, if the buildings are really used for the continuous heating, the effect, efficiency is much higher, it's more over 60%, 66% or 65%. So maybe the learning here and insight here that when we are making this kind of analyzing for energy saving measures, how efficient they are, this use of the heating system has significant influence for that. And in the intermittent case, heating, system is more difficult to reach very demanding target than continuous heating. But that's also the question about thermal comfort. What is accepted there and what is not accepted here? And we can see here that uh, uh, here the reference here, maybe the numbers are a little bit small, but we can see reference number is what we have it before. And when we have insulation there, we can uh, improve comfort because we have lower, lower heating demand there. And that's meaning also that if we have, if we make these improvements in the building and we have intermittent heating where we have problem for the thermal comfort, those measures are improving comfort first and then partly for energy saving. So part of the saving or expected saving can go to the thermal comfort is coming to better. Uh, also, we see that there's also ha effect for the overheating. But the thing is that when, when we improve uh, air tightness, 
is quite obvious at, that, at the same time that our ventilation rate is coming lower and lower. So it's meaning that to make very, how to say, uh, good improvement for air tightness, you at the moment have to make improvement for your ventilation site. And in this case, we have proposing to use the mechanical ballast ventilation with heat recovery. Otherwise, you are not able to reach your uh, indoor climate targets. So, this Rahu here means room uh, specific air handed unit that's implemented there. That's also one of the novel technologies that is introduced in this Surefit project. Okay, in the continuous heating, of course, the, the efficient uh, Im impact for the thermal comfort is less. And uh, also, I, I think that these results in the different part of the world, uh, different countries here are quite similar. The numbers are slightly different, so I don't really repeat it, this number here, but we can show that we have the same thing that we we have improvement for the conditions there, but still, if we have intermittent heating, our room temperatures are not ideal. If you're looking for like a European standard, which say class A, we, this is not exactly fulfilled this target because heating is using intermittent. So if I'm going here for the conclusion that the continuous heating and intermittent heating, the efficient of these measures are different, and that's have to take into account when the final, final, um, final analyzing for this selection of the system have been done. That some of them is working better for the system side, some of them better for the passive side. And if we make this improvement, we also at the same time improve thermal comfort there. And part of the saving potential is going for that, that we have a better thermal comfort there. We improve both energy efficiency plus comfort for the like insulation there. And that last thing is very important to know that if we, if we make buildings more airtight, we have to take care about ventilation. So we should have some kind of mechanical ventilation and most energy efficient solution have is the balanced ventilation with heat recovery. Okay, thank you. Thanks, uh, thank Christo. Any, uh, yeah. Do you have any, any, any questions, any, any comments, anything you want to know? Um, yeah, please, yeah, go ahead. Hello. I'm sorry, can I just ask, um, you, you mentioned that you got like a lot of like uh, um, energy resources package, but how, how do you like decide it? Do you have any indicators? Choose these strategies, choose these technologies. Can you just think, uh, I'm just thinking, you just like uh, choose some passive packages and some ventilation packages, but how do you make sure this technology? Do you have any strategies or maybe some like Okay, one thing, those technologies which are here analyzed, they are coming from this project and they have introduced this like uh, innovative technology that we are analyzing. So these individual technologies are the palette that we select. And based on that, we, which we don't have no time to, to go to details. Of course, we have to design size is technology like insulation depths and, and also the heat pumps that we have done it and we have made there some assumption and also we have taken into account some kind of constraint for the actual demo buildings, what they can implement there or what they believe there. And then because we have a target to make a reduction for the 60% for purchase energy CO and CO2 emissions so we calculate how that could happen and which combination could work there. And base of this calculation is then part of the selection for the final technologies. Yeah. So, okay. And uh, okay, this is some kind of parameter optimization what we have done it here. So it's not we, we talk to use multi-objective optimization, but we then talk that it's not giving much extra value here because we calculate. And also inside we have calculated different depths of the insulation in the simulation, then we have selecting finally one of those in the packages. So finally, e you guys just decided this, this, this thing there. So yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, okay, good. Thank you. Uh, thank you. So uh, thanks, uh, Professor Rosto. We move now to... Yeah, okay, thank you.